Hello viewers, today I am going to talk uh, to you about a clinical condition which is called an intersection syndrome. Now intersection syndrome is an uncommon cause of pain across uh, the distal aspect of the wrist. Now if you are a general practitioner or orthopedic surgeon or a physiotherapist, now, because this condition is uncommon, sometimes uh, diagnosing this condition can be challenging. So I'll take you through what is in intersection syndrome and I will also uh, talk about uh, how to do a steroid injection. Now intersection syndrome is also known as crossover uh, syndrome uh, or peritendinitis crepitans. It is also called as uh, subcutaneous perimyositis. So it is known by a lot of uh, other names. Now if you talk about the symptoms, now the symptoms that are usually associated with uh, intersection syndrome is uh, pain across the wrist. So if you see my wrist, um, you will usually see pain. If this is the wrist, this is the wrist joint, then the symptoms, you will see swelling, pain across uh, this region. And it's usually four to eight centimeters proximal to the radial stoloid uh, or roughly the wrist joint. And it is usually seen in rowers or weightlifters, but in developing country, in my experience, I see much more frequently in manual, manual uh, laborers, uh, which uh, involve in repeated activities of lifting heavy weight. So if you are a patient, if you have got pain and swelling across this region, then you should think of uh, intersection syndrome. So now this is the gentleman who is a laborer by profession. And he has come to my clinic with pain and swelling in this right uh, hand. Uh, usually it affects the dominant hand because that is uh, the hand which you use it more often for your day-to-day -day activities. Now if you see the difference between the two hands, if you see here and if you see here, you can appreciate there is a lot of swelling in this region. So if you see a lot of swelling in this region, you should be thinking of intersection syndrome. Now the other common condition which is more commoner and it is and is the cause of pain across uh, the distal aspect of the wrist is uh, decurvance. Now decurvance, pain and tenderness will be more closer to the radial stoloid. So this is I have uh, marked the radial stoloid and the extensor retinaculum is pretty close to it. So pain across in this region is usually associated with decurvance. In intersection syndrome, pain is much more proximal. So I have explained this in my wrist examination. Um, video. So if you see pain here is much more proximal. So if I press here, he doesn't like it. And it involves a larger area. And if you see a decurvance, it will be far more distal. So this is at least four to eight centimeters proximal. So all this area, if I can draw it up for you, this is all swollen. Now, what is the special test? Now there is if, if you are careful enough, this swelling itself is a giveaway. So the test that you will read in books is uh, if you ask the patient to passively extend the thumb or extend the wrist, then you will feel a crepitus here. And what I do is, uh, it's very easy, I just put my hand over the swollen area and I ask patient to do active uh, wrist extension and flexion. And I can feel a grating in this area and a crepitus. And that clinches the diagnosis of intersection syndrome. So in terms of treatment, uh, when the patient comes to you, I think activity modification and rest uh, is extremely important. So if you are a patient, modify your activities, try to give that hand some rest, uh, take some anti-inflammatories, and that might help you to uh, uh, settle your symptoms down. Occasionally, you may need to splint it, so you can have a plaster or, or, or a futura splint just to give rest to that area. Uh, majority of the patients will get better with these non-operative treatments, especially activity modification, anti-inflammatory and splints. Uh, if it doesn't get better, then um, sometimes you need to uh, give a steroid injection. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I do injection for uh, this particular condition as well. And rarely, if it doesn't get better with all these, and if you have failed, uh, to relieve the symptoms even after steroid injection, then you may need to sometime decompress and perform a surgery. So let's see how to do injection for this condition. So first we are going to clean this area with some alcohol wipes. So 
So, now various people will use uh, various amount of uh, combination of steroid and local anesthetic. I use 40 milligram of Depomedron and I use uh, roughly uh, 3 mils of 2% uh, xylocaine. Now, if you are doing this ultrasound guided and if you can be sure that you are in a um, you are infiltrating very close to the tendon, then you can reduce this volume. I have deliberately kept this volume to around 4 ml because I want to infiltrate um, the whole area uh, where I see the swelling, especially in the center part. So, this is my mixture. So, it's roughly around 4 ml. So, I'm just going to give it a shake and I have checked that this is the most tender spot for him. So, you can inject from this direction or you can inject from this direction. However, I particularly choose to inject uh, from proximal to distal direction. So, just be very gentle. And one thing that you have to be extremely um, careful about is that you are not injecting uh, subcutaneously because if you inject subcutaneously, then the chances of uh, uh, local uh, skin complication in form of depigmentation or hyperpigmentation can be extremely common. So, I can feel that I am not very close to the skin. I will aspirate it and then I will just slowly inject. So, at this point of time, majority of the injection is going at the center and after a little while, I am just going to proceed my needle a little bit further as the local anesthetic will take action so that it redistributes over the whole area where there was pain and swelling. So, one particular, I have deliberately left the needle here because it is not causing him any pain, but if I ask him to move his wrist, you will see that the needle is not moving. So, if it was into the tendon, it will uh, move uh, with the wrist. So, that means that confirms that I am in the right place. Once I remove the needle, I just use a swab to redistribute the steroid in the whole area. So, I will just do it few times and that is it. That is how you inject uh, for intersection syndrome. So, viewers, this was a brief summary about uh, what is intersection syndrome and how uh, you can diagnose yourself that if at all you are having intersection syndrome. Uh, this video also showed how to inject uh, a steroid for this condition. Uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, do subscribe and do share our channel. Thank you.